Earth's electrodynamic system can be relatively complex in geospace. Luckily, when it comes to the interaction with the lower levels of what we traditionally consider to be the global electric circuit, it is a bit simpler. I recently came across this article about Peterson currents and their connection to the global electric circuit, and I honestly needed a refresher, so I figured you might want to know some terminology and processes involved. Hopefully we all recognize the Birkeland currents connecting Earth to Sun, arcing in and out at two different latitudes, approximately 75 and 60. The lateral currents connecting the Birkeland currents up into space are what we call Peterson currents, which are partially driven by the Hall effect currents below them. Looking at the sun-facing side here, the dawn side of Earth always has the incoming around the 75th latitude, feeding the particle precipitation and ionosphere in the polar region, while bleeding off excess via the left upward return around 60th latitude. At dusk on Earth, the energy that came in throughout the day through the polar region, along with a sub-input at the right of the 60th latitude, returns back out into space around the 75th. Now, Let's look at some differences between this level and the lower global electric circuit. At the geospace level, the currents come in as sheets, much like as is shown. At the Peterson side currents, they are also flat sheets going directly across. Now the up and down in the global electric circuit is actually not straight, it's also not a sheet, but it's spinning with the wind in a helix, a vortex up and down, largely tied to water vapor and ions in the atmosphere. At ground level, the telluric currents are not straight flowing from high to low, but again, following the curves of the wind. The energy is with the oxygen, the water vapor, and certainly the dust in the atmosphere, an excellent carrier of charge. So, to review, the upper level is Birkeland current sheets flowing up and down with Peterson current sheets connecting across. Below that, the motion is largely helical and curved, following the airflow rather than the direct charge exchange. The magnetic field of Earth should be noted to have this rotation differential where the outside shell flows dawn to dusk and hopefully you see the interior flow running counter as dusk to dawn. First step, know the flows and how they go. Be safe everyone.